stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush. And as you can see, I got um, a selection of colors there. I've got some Prussian blue. I got two different types of blue there. I've got a cobalt blue and a primary blue. I've got a primary red and a primary yellow, some white and some black. I don't know what size this cardboard is, but you can paint on any canvas, any panel you want. It's, this is actually a, I've actually cut that a 10 by eight. There we are, I surprised myself. <laughs> so what I was thinking of doing today is doing some sort of a sunset -y scene. Um, I've done seas and sunsets and things, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna continue that theme for now. Uh, so I think we'll do a wintery type of scene, same thing. So I'm just gonna put an horizon line across there like that. There you go, very, very simple. Now you don't need to draw in order to paint. What we're gonna to need to do, then it, we're gonna put some something in the background then like this, some buildings, and we just need to just get a couple of little things going on like this. As you can see, little tiny square marks like that. Just little building shapes. Okay, so, but we need to put something, a focal point there like this maybe. I don't know. Get something, maybe like that. I don't know what is this. Maybe a church or something. There we are. And this is going in. Going back into the distance there, maybe we'll put a, sp a spire or something, I don't know. Like that. We'll work it out. Just put a few bits and pieces in. This could be anywhere, this could be in Italy or anywhere, like anywhere really. Just, just, just a, there we are. Some sort of a, some sort of a, a pattern like that. We need to bring this then in, into into the water area because there's going to be some water. We could we could put a boat or something. I don't know. We'll we'll work that. We'll work that out. We'll see what we can come up with now. I'm just going to moisten down my my brush. I'm going to pick up some white. I'm going to put the, the smallest amount of yellow just on the tip of my brush because I want to go in there and just put a little bit of white and yellow into the sky. Bringing a bit of that up there, like that. Don't worry about your, your pencil. If his pencil is coming off like my pencil is, don't worry about that. Just practice mixing the paints on your canvas. Now, the reason I like using um, cardboard is because it's very absorbent. It's a little bit more forgiving than um, canvas. So... You can get away with a little bit more, especially as a beginner. If you're learning how to use acrylics, then get some of this mount board. This is readily available on eBay, and um, it's it's quite inexpensive, really. It's quite inexpensive for what it is, and you can cut it to any size, any shape. You can have ovals or anything, and it doesn't mean you can't sell them. Then, of course, you can. So, you know, if if you want to just paint on card, then paint on card. Let's get some more yellow. I might have gone a bit overboard with that yellow then, with that orange then. There we are, it doesn't matter, we'll get it in there now, like this. Let's get a bit more white, a bit more yellow. I went a bit. I had, went a bit mad with the old, um, <laughs> the old red there. It doesn't matter. We'll play with it now. We'll play with it. We'll, we'll lighten that up in a second. This is what it's all about: is making mistakes and finding ways around them. There we go. Let's just get a bit of white in there. Let's just lightening that up a bit like this. You can see that my paint has already started to dry. And that's good. That's okay. We can live with that. Don't want any rough, um, hard edges. Nice and smooth like that. Now I'm using a new set of lights today in the studio. Um, these are um, by Newer, which is um, 
it's spelled N W E double W E R newer lights and um, this video is actually sponsored by them because I'm using a, a a couple of their new lights that they've um, they, they they sent me out which is really nice thank you very much newer um so um I'll be doing a review on these lights um after Christmas now because I'm just getting used to them making sure that they do what I want them to do in the studio because um I got a ring light as well, which is a which is a circular light, which is a circular light, and it works all off and half off my phone, and um, it allows me to control my lighting. And I got a couple of other lights as well, which I've been sent out, which is quite nice. So thank you very much for that. I did I did mention that um, I might be contacting these companies. Um, so let's just get a little bit of this colour in there. We're going to get a bit of orange in there in a minute. I just want that to dry off in a second. So let's just add some more white. Let's get some white into this guy. A lot more white than that. And just practice and play with your paint. Don't worry about making mistakes. I'm just going to swill my brush out just a touch. Don't worry about making mistakes with it. Um, these type of things are, are designed to just get you painting. And that's all you want to do is get painting first. So we got a nice brighter spot. I wanted to put a brighter spot in there, didn't I? There you go. Underpainting. All you'll be doing at the moment is just putting some underlining colour in there like that. Now, what we want to do now is bring a bit of that colour down here. I have been asked about um, making, you know, how, how do I decide what goes in the foreground and stuff like that. But we're not going to do the foreground today. Because you don't always have to do a foreground. Some would say you have to, but I don't believe in it myself. I just, I just like painting, and and I do this type of painting basically for my own relaxation, because um, I suffer a lot with anxiety and stress. And So, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to get a hairdryer on that. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a dry, because it's, it's looking a bit, it's looking a bit, um, how can I say? It's, it's like a, it's like a salmony pink, and I don't want that. I want it more of a red and an orange, but I want to dry that off first, because that's just a, an underlining colour. So, as you can see, we've basically obliterated our little drawing, but we know it's there, and, and that's the thing. Always have that in your mind, and um, once you've drawn it, you should have an idea of roughly what it looks like. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm picking up another brush. Okay, so I'm going to get some yellow now. And I'm just going to put some yellow in on top of that white there like this. I'm going to bring in some more yellow down here. Like that. And just put layers. The 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 the, the um, cardamom yellow is is like a semi-transparent, so you'll get away with the colours coming through the colour. So a transparent colour means it'll show underlining colours, whereas opaque colours will tend to just obliterate what it what you, whatever you painted over. So so if I if I put a line like that and it was opaque, you wouldn't see any colours coming through it. That's what I'm trying to say. So okay, so let's get some nice orange. Again, let's just play around with the, the colours. Again, let's just get some colour in there now. Like this. Just darkening that up a bit like that. Getting that to sweep up through. Like 
making it look a little bit sunsetty. There you go. And again, put a bit of that down here and there, like that. Just clean your brush off. Lovely jubbly. Okay, um, and dry that once more. When you're doing this, make sure it's really, really, really dry to put a touch. Because we're going to try and put a little bit of blue over this and um, we don't want it to go green. That's important. Very much so. I hope that's dry enough. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Okay, before I do anything else, um, I'm just going to work on the water a bit by there now. So I'm going to get some Prussian blue and um, a little bit of red in that Prussian blue. That's going to make it like a purpley type of colour. Bring a little bit of white in, I'll show you what I mean. See, it's like a dark, dark purple. That's what we want, a little bit more red in that. And then let's just... put this, some sort of colour in the water like this and then put in the dark on the side there Okay, I know it looks um, I know it looks quite bad at the moment, but trust me, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but it's cold and wet at the moment, and I'm not I'm not a lover of cold and wet. So. Put in a little bit more white in this sky. Just build up these colors like this. Pays not to be too precise with skies. Okay, so let's get a little bit of this, this blue and that blue together. Whatever blue you've got. Um, I had a question the other day saying I've been trying to get a de decent blue for the sky, but um, to be quite honest with you, a sky blue, the best mix for a sky blue is ultramarine blue and, um, and a little bit of... Um, Prussian blue I find but whatever blue you got to hand whatever blue you got to hand add some white just get a little bit of color in that sky like this there's a little essence of blue just shining through bit of blue shining through No right and no wrong way to paint the sky. Not really. Let's get a little bit more darker colour just up the top edge there. I don't want to put a lot of paint on my brush, but I just want to darken this just a touch there like that. And put a bit of black colour in now there. Just splat it on like that. wash this brush just get a little bit more white a 
done a lovely um, sky the other week. Um, worked out really well actually. So what we need to do is darken some, get a little bit of Prussian blue into that red. I want to darken this red up down here. Bit more moisture on my brush. Don't want to paint it on too thickly, but we don't want to paint it on too thickly. But we want that nice warmth coming in down the bottom there, like that. Like as if the sun is setting. Could be setting. It could be setting. It could be. Get all these colours in. Get all these colours in here like that. There you go. Bit more red, a little bit of Prussian blue. I guess a lovely colour. Lovely, lovely colour. Just a mixture of colours. And again, we don't want thick paint, we want quite a, a thin paint. So I'm just damping my brush onto a bit of tissue paper like that. There's very little paint on this brush now. But you can see it's more like a wishy-washy colour. And you can do this. You can do this with... Um, with acrylics because especially on cardboard like this because what you find then is because the cardboard is more absorbent basically papers in it if you think about it it's like a compressed paper so because we we're using card we can get away with using paint as thin as we want to because it's just going to absorb into the it's just going to absorb into the the paper or the card Make these little cloud marks just to separate on the sky there, like this. Just little stringers. There you go. You can see it's building up that sky. There we are. So we got a nice warm type of sunsetty type of sky. Let's get a little bit of white back in. Just flick a little tiny bit of white here, there, and everywhere. I'll say like that. It's the multitude of colours there. Now, I'm going to dry that again. Let's get some of my medium mix and some yellow. There we are. Make a very, very thin, very, very thin yellow. You can do this on canvas, you can do this on canvas board, you can do this on, on wood. As long as you're using some sort of a medium like I got there. What I'm going to do now is put a very thin coat of yellow completely over that just to soften it back and give it that bit of a a warm glow to the painting like that. I love doing this. This is one of my little favourite little tricks that I use a lot of. bit more paint. I got some rough looking marks on this gesso that I put on so I'm just gonna in this case I, I want normally I, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind but I just want to hide a bit through of them squiggly marks like that 
There we are. So that's nice and warm now. I like that. I like that. It's looking really, really warm. Okay, again, let's dry that off with a hairdryer. This is something you can't do with oil paints. Uh, you have to wait for the, the surface of the paints to dry. And But with acrylics, you can just do this. It's wonderful. I'm not going overboard with that because um, I just want to get in some of... I'm going to get some Prussian blue now. And again, I'm going to use my stick to just draw a little line. Ooh, there we are, like that. And let's just put our little buildings in. Simple. Look. Don't have to don't have to worry too much about it's just shapes, little tiny shapes like that. And before you know it, you build a little scene of buildings and stuff in the background. How's that? Isn't that good? Don't have to be a master artist. You don't. Okay, let's put a let's put a slightly bigger building shape in. And that's going down there then like this. Very simple, easy paintings that you can do as a beginner or if you've never painted before. Give it a try. Give it a try because these little things are I worked out and designed to get you started and then you can move on and you can become a fantastic artist but in the meantime have fun have fun and, and, and just play just play with with paint and that's what it's all about playing with paint you never learn until you start to try and don't get put off by your first brush stroke your first brush stroke is your hardest brush stroke trust me I'm following along with resources like YouTube before you know it you'll be painting like a master so let's just put a Oblong. That's on there like that. Getting a bit of black, darkening this up now. Quite black. Leaving some of that lighter colour coming through, but we need to really darken this up now. Like this. Maybe that's going just on a little bit of an angle like that. Like make it look as if it's just disappearing into the background like that. And just trying to marry up that shape there. Make it look as if it's maybe a back of a church or something. I don't know. Get a bit more paint on my brush now. I'm going to bring this across like that. I'm going to continue that line as straight as I possibly can. There we go. And let's have a look. What can we do now? Let's do another couple of little buildings and things. There you go. A couple of little things. This is really dark down there, so you can't really see what's what. But all you can see is some sort of a shape in the background there. Oh, that's just disappearing over there then. Got a little bit more light to it. I'm bringing in a bit of a little bit of moisture into that paint now because what we want to do now is bring a little bit of a shadow in into this water area like that and again a little bit under there maybe 
not so strong. There's a little bit of shadow in the water there like that. Using the same brush now. Which is not the best brush in the world. So I I, I try to use um, old brushes and stuff when I'm when I'm painting as well. So because you you might not have new brushes. You might not have a new brush. I'm just maybe do something like that. Get a little bit of yellow on that on the brush. Just put a little bit of light like that. What we can do then is um, is get a detail brush then. I got a little detail brush here somewhere. <laughs> if I put my detail brush. There we are. I got a little bit of detail brush now like this. Um, it's a round brush, I we call them detail brushes. Well I do anyway. And I'm just gonna put a little a few little lights like this and maybe just who knows. A couple of little lights that are lighting up whatever this place is. Oh, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Let's continue that. Again, just put in a few little marks in like that. Let's just brighten this area up now with a bit of light. It's a bit of a glow in the sky like that. Of a glow. Get your fingers in there. Rub it in. And if you wanted to, you could put a you could put a little shape like this. Just in a little bit, let's get a bit of that yellow, orange. I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to do. I thought I'd put a maybe some sort of a Oops, I need a bit darker than that. I want to put some sort of a boat or something in there, maybe. Maybe you can just about make that out, I don't know. You may be able to. It's a little tiny boat. Don't know if you can see the little tiny boat. Maybe, maybe, if I put a little bit of water like that, and uh, a little bit of a highlight there, and maybe, um, using the very tip of my brush now just to get some as his mast. You might not see that but it looks effective. We can't see much of it anyway but there's a little boat in the river there. I'll tell you what we need to do. Let's get a little bit of this. So I, I washed messed my brush up now let's get them um, let's get a bit of purple a bit of red some white I just want to put a little bit of lighter color in this water there like this just smudging a bit of that in put it down like that and then just smudge it in with your finger
just gives a little bit of a see smudge it in with your finger like that. This is why I like pa painting on cardboard because it allows you to play. And let's just spark this up again. Sparkle up. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a there you go. time. There you are, there's a nice little simple painting for you to have a go at. Um, give it a whirl, see how you come up with it.